Welcome back to M Hood Pichon. Yeah, you're right. Bonacary Spillway. Yeah, you're right. Big hike. Big hike. We are just north of Airline Highway, walking north towards Pontchartrain. We're not going to go all the way to Pontchartrain on our right. Here we got some water. It's a canal. We're going to have to get down a good ways. It's wide here, but here we don't have a lot of access to it. Down here, it's going to narrow up and we're going to start to get better access. It looks a little stagnant, maybe dead snot grass on top. ATV tracks, pig tracks, deer. I think I see a, a dog track too. A few days ago, I saw a random comment on a newer video where I was doing a bushwhack around a pond that I'd never been to. And someone said something, fishing needs to be fun. That was too much work. Sometimes it's a lot of work, but here's the theory with the spillway. And it's also an opinion that Alex and I both share and we're pretty confident and we really believe it too. In the spillway, all these areas where you can easily get to seem to have a lot of pressure and not a lot of fish. It's a lot more difficult. And it seems if you go deep into the spillway, like where we're at, no one can drive back here. ATVs come back here, but you can't come back here in a truck, right? When we come back, we do a big bushwhack or a big hike in this field, we seem to do better. However, I haven't done this particular hike in quite some time. So, let me show you what's up. It's been a while since I've done this hike. And the last time I did it, I was able to walk down this trail right here. None of this cut grass was here. There's a lot more water here there is a canal that runs this way and eventually goes into Pontchartrain. We can't get down either side without having to bushwhack through cut grass and we are not bushwhacking through cut grass. Plus, a lot of the water over here is choked. There was only one way to find that out and that was come back here. So, yeah, too much work? No, but <laughs> things are good when it's work. When you got to work for it. The Bonacary Spillway is actually quite huge. So we have options. We're just going to have to backtrack a little bit. There's a lot of water out here. A lot of things to check out. We're back up here at the head of the trail. Alex is focused on this right here. We're going to look over here. For the moment, I have a watermelon Yamamoto Cinco on with a 1 16th ounce bullet weight. There's like no wind today, so I could go weightless and probably will. This bit of water here is connected to where Alex is by a small concrete pipe. And I think it's connected to the pond that you might see through the trees. Yes, we are real close to a commercial airport. There will be planes coming over. Going weightless, June bug. Probably bushwhack, well, we'll probably walk, end up walking around a little bit, looking for other openings. Because uh -huh. of where the sun is, unless we get overcast, but as long as the sun is out, the most productive casts are gonna be into the sun retrieving out of it rather than retrieving into it that would mean we would need to get that way but right here what i think a productive cast would be not what you just did <clears throat> get as close as you can and work the bait parallel to this bank tight to this grass line either throw to your left or your right i am about to finish my retrieve see the tight to the grass line Hides the sun from the fish. We spent a bit of time just to get to the right side of this big pond. Now we have the sun ahead of us and we can cast into it. That's going to be much more productive. 
Look at that big alligator in front of me. You might not be able to see. He's kind of far away. You're never going <laughs> to get get away from alligators in southeast Louisiana. They're not a problem. Only if you're scared of them, but they're not a problem. Oh, there's two of them out there. Gotcha. Nice. I switched to a green pumpkin Cinco. Oh, ho, ho, ho. holy moly. Look at that, guys. Look at that. That is a nice one. Yes. Oh, ho, ho. I think this is the, my biggest this year. Yes. Almost three pounds, 2.84. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Pretty cool for the first fish. Almost a three pounder. Gotcha. Smoked my bait, dang it. This is a different species of fish here. Commonly known as a green trout, ditch pickle, or as I like to call them. Go home, you little dink. Wow, that's nice. Mm -hmm. This is... Alex's first fish up on the bank, but the first one actually broke him off or something over there, right? Yeah. So that's your second catch, but your first one up here on the bank, about maybe two pounds. Oh yeah. It looks good. Oh yeah, you're right. I'm coming, I'm coming. Is, that's that's a sockele. That is a humongous sockele. Oh, I didn't bring an ice chest even. Dang it. Holy moly, Alex. Do you have a scale? Yeah. Uh, 1.41. So a little over a pound. You just made a lot of people upset. Mm-hmm. Didn't bring an ice chest. There's a little dink bass in this little puddle here. I did see an even bigger one. Gotcha! I knew you were in there, I saw you. 
Look at that, Alex. Alex was saying to me when we first tried this spot, I don't think we're gonna catch anything in there. Just a little pickle, a little tiny green trout, dink bass. So how did you guys like Alex's Yeah, You Right? I thought it was kind of blood curdling, like death metal, like Wake the Dead. It surprised me. I asked him, hey, give me your best Yeah, You Right. And I was like, all right, Cannibal Corpse. Yeah, you're right, guys. We're at the car. It was fun. We didn't get a ton of fish, but we had a blast. Oh, yeah. There's some good fish. Yeah, we got some good ones. But now I'm going to say this. Thanks for watching, guys. Liking, sharing, and subscribing. I'll see you next time.